Hello and welcome to the One Degree Show. I am your host, Ella May, and join me as we talk to elite entrepreneurs about the one connection, the one person that changed the trajectory of their business and their life. Let's get into it. What's up? I'm here with the One Degree Show, and I am here with John Benson. Thanks for being here. Hey, glad to be here, Ella. Cool to see you again, too. So, yeah, super cool. Tomorrow. So, yeah. yeah, John has a super special place in my heart. I actually worked for him for two years before I kicked off as an entrepreneur. Mm. And guys, like, I didn't know what Zoom was when I started working for John. Like, <laughs> I should not have gotten that job. But, you know, you learn quick and yeah. off you go, right? Yeah. So John spent the last 15 years helping thousands of entrepreneurs make crazy amounts of money, about 12 billion and counting. He does that by teaching people how to write compelling marketing and sales copy. He's best known in the marketing world as the guy who invented the VSL. And he still does lots of stuff to this day around marketing and copywriting. So thanks for being here, John. Hey, it's my pleasure. I love it. So give us a little bit of a background as to how you got to where you are now. I uh, started in 2004. Uh, I will start before that with my, not in the internet marketing space, but started as a graphic designer. I started my own company in 1997 and didn't know what I was doing at all. <laughs> just kind of wing it, you know, just kind of winging it. And finally kind of, at, kind of clawed my way to be somewhat successful in that business. And, and along the way, I got extremely obese and had a heart attack oh. and all kinds of bad stuff. And so I decided to write a book about it uh, when I was turning 40 and cause I got myself back into shape and, and wrote a book and I had no idea what to do with it. Met a guy named Tom Venuto, a very important person in my career tra trajectory for sure, who was an internet marketer who I, I had no idea what, like you had no idea what zoom was. I had no idea what internet <laughs> marketing was. Yeah. And, uh, and so I was just, I was just posting like my own content and articles before blogs were even a thing. We had, you know, have to, you have to up, upload an HTML page, to a, new, a new HTML page every single time. It was like very manual, man. Yeah. Fetch was our friend, but, uh, and Tom had read an article I'd written and he liked it. And so he said, I, I published, you know, my own books and stuff. And so I flew to New York, hung out with him, did a couple workouts. Next thing you know, uh, he's got a book deal. So he's saying, I'll do the marketing. I'll write the copy, which I had no idea what that even meant. Um, and I'll, uh, you know, and you just, you just do the book. So this is perfect. Right. And that's how it all started. And I remember seeing my first sales page and I had no idea what I was looking at 6,000 words. And I was like, this will, this is impossible. This will never work. Right. Yeah. It's too long. It's, it's, it's too hypey, all the stuff that everyone says to this very day. <laughs> that's not true. Um, but it obviously did work and it worked so well. I quit my job that day and, and the day the book came out, I think it was the next day I quit even though I own the place. So I just walked out and handed the keys to my VP. And that was it. And next thing you know, I'm an internet marketer. So that's how the whole thing started in 2004. Oh, really cool. Okay. So it was the success of your first product in 2004 that kicked everything off. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, super yeah. cool. Okay. I don't know if I even knew that story. Yeah. Very cool. So what do you think are some of the key things? Like you said, like a lot of people are really intimidated when they see, you know, 6,000 words, that 6,000 word sales letters and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. What do you think are some of the key things that people normally get wrong when it comes to talking about their product, their service, whatever it might be? Oh my gosh. When, when people are talking about their own stuff, what they get wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, first of all, they make it about their product, right? They make mm. it about the features or the or the product itself, and no one gives a shit about that. They don't care. <laughs> uh, they they care about the benefits and what it's going to do for them. So, so to get out of the mindset of I'm so proud of this baby that I've created, you have to lay the baby aside and say, well, what will the baby do for me? Which is really much harder to quantify. Um, mm. and, and you can quantify that without even mentioning the baby, without even mentioning the product or, or service itself. Uh, so uh, I think a really well-written sales letter doesn't even mention the fact that there's anything to do with the sales letter until you can, until it's too late, you know, <laughs> kind of creeps up on you. Next thing you know, there's something to buy. And, uh, and so, so that's how I look at that's the biggest mistake people make when they're creating their own stuff is mm. they're, they're, they, first of all, they're 
they talk too much about their own product. And second of all, they're, they sell completely paralyzed. I mean, they, they really have this notion that they are their avatar, that they are the person buying their product or service. Mm -hmm. So I have clients, not anymore, but I used to have clients who would read sales letters and say, I would never buy a product if I read that sales letter. I said, that's great because you're not your freaking avatar. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not the Fantastic. guy buying your, your, your product. So, so, uh, what you would buy is, is just not the point. So, so as long as the sales letter has to be congruent with them, like it can't be like, you know, speaking a language that's completely foreign to them or, or telling lies or anything like that. But, mm -hmm. but, um, they're, they're, they're definitely afraid to sell hard. They're afraid to pitch. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing I see in people writing their own stuff is they're, they don't know how to pitch and they, and then when they do, they're afraid of it, you know? And, um, yeah, I, I, it, it's really weird. It's, it's like one of those words that you're afraid of being called, but to me, the word has no meaning at all. And one of those words is salesy. It's like, mm. oh, that's too salesy. I'm like, that doesn't mean anything to me. That, that doesn't, I, I don't have a, you know, it does, does it sell is the only thing I care, I care about. Is it selling the product and doing so ethically, meaning you're not lying. You're, you're, you're selling a good product. All that stuff has to be there. So let me just quantify everything I'm saying with that hopefully obvious caveat, but it's not too obvious to some people, but, uh, it is to me that has to be there. That has to be there. But once that's there, you should sell at, at pulling out every single plug. I mean, you, whatever it takes to sell the product, um, it should be done. And if not, then you don't believe in your product enough or you don't value your customer enough to change their life. Mm, that's such a good point. So one thing, the one thing that John has a couple like really hidden talents that you wouldn't really know unless you spend time with him. One of them is music. He's a really gifted musician. Another one is nutrition, like health and nutrition. Like this guy knows every hormone, exactly what they do, <laughs> et cetera. But another one and one that I've always admired has been your, I don't know if you were, were you formally trained in NLP? Not formally. No, I just read, I, I studied with a guy that studied under Bandler when I was in college and I was just interested in it because he was right. telling me about this, this, this way to, to meet girls. <laughs> so it was, and I was not, I had no desire to seduce girls like in a, in a terrible way. I had a desire right. you just to, wanted meet, to meet women. Yeah. I want, yeah. and so I wanted to meet more girls and, and I was relatively okay at that, but I wanted to get a, get a leverage. And most of all, and this is true because my first major was communications. So mm. I took communications and not the radio stuff, but human, it was literally called human communications, which led into philosophy. But, um, but because I was so, in, I was so motivated by wanting to communicate with people to the utmost ability. And mm. that really has always intrigued me. Like how does someone communicate their heart and soul in a way that really moves the other person so that not only can you inspire someone, but you can connect with somebody. So that was where my interests were with, with NLP is I wanted to get through the barriers of the noise and into the connection angle. Now I realize that there are total douches out there that use NLP in a very negative way. Mm. Uh, a couple of guys I can think of off the top of my head, but, <laughs> but that, 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 you know, they're, they're like, they're on Oprah bragging about how they're, they can, you know, they can, you know, get women into bed in a bar and all this stuff. And and and, and I remember this this one guy who did this on Oprah. It was, I, I want to say it was I don't want to um, demean Oprah, but maybe it wasn't Oprah, but it was someone like Oprah. It was someone like that, like public and, figure. And, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the name of it, but maybe it, it was an Oprah-like figure. And and this guy did this. He went in, and the women hated him in the audience, but he proved his point. Yeah, I could actually do this because, but but yeah, yeah. that's not what I'm talking about. So people have that connotation with with NLP. Hmm. And, uh, and I hear that a lot. It's like, like, so NLP is like the work of the devil or something horrible. And it's like, you know, you might as well say language is the work of the devil. It's the same thing. I mean, people use her, do horrible things with just words all the time. So NLP is just how it's just a way of getting through the noise of the brain is the way I look at it. And so that's just one tool in the tool chest. I mean, that's just, you know, it's not the only thing that you use as a copywriter. Storytelling doesn't have, I mean, it can have NLP aspects of it, but it's, you know, it's, that's not, NLP or so, but that's a vital part of selling anything is knowing how to tell a story. This is why, this is why I wasn't sure if you were trained in it. And, and by the way, sorry for anybody who's listening, who's not sure what we're talking about. NLP is neuro linguistic yeah. programming. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's, 
I don't even think I could do it justice by explaining it. Google it. It's really interesting. Yeah. But this is why I wasn't sure if you were actually trained in NLP. Because what I was going to say is like the third thing that really stands out to me about you is like sort of a hidden superpower is, or maybe not so hidden, is your ability to communicate and tell stories. Mm -hmm. And and I, you know, I've seen it live from working with you when you would take calls and help people with their branding. And it was mm -hmm. like in a half hour, these guys were totally turned around. Their messaging made sense. All of a sudden there was a narrative. People could come in yeah. on it. It was really remarkable. So Thank what you. Do you yeah, no, uh, honestly. So what do you find when it comes to communication, storytelling, really mm -hmm. creating a narrative, uh, whether it's you as a personal brand or people have a service, a product, whatever, what mm -hmm. do you find are the key things that should show up there? Uh, that's a good question. If you're, if you're creating a narrative um, around you, that if, if you are the story, then you have to be the every man or every woman you have to you have to be able to relate to mm. that person so the hero's journey starts off with the, the every man right it's 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 somebody that's a <clears throat> un, unsung hero kind of kind of thing uh, so that's that story's been intriguing to humans since humans were old you know, since humans could write so that can almost never go wrong so if that, if that if you do have that story like if you can say you know I, I started off, you know, uh, the, the old Steve Martin line, you know, I was born a poor black child, you know, when he, when he was a white guy. Have you ever seen the jerk? You have to see the jerk. I just rent the movie, the jerk I, okay. it was around in the seventies, but, but he's, it's a hilarious line. He says, I was born a poor black man and he's a white guy because he was raised in an all black family thinking he was black. So, uh, but, uh, but it, it starts off in this hero's journey kind of way in the most funny, weird way possible. But the same thing is true of any of the, uh, the uh, legends of Arthur, or, you know, mm -hmm. Epic, a Gilgamesh. I mean, you go through all of this stuff, you see, the hero's journey of the bible you see that a lot and so tell your story that way does require you to get very um, intimate with the reader i guess you could say you have to be able to be a little bit transparent and say uh, as i as i teach people to do i, I just I just complete the sentence you know i wasn't always blank i used to be a blank right and so that it just doing those that simple little exercise it, it kind of fills in the gaps and it also is a way to talk about yourself without sounding like you're bragging so if I talked about myself from a fitness angle and said, you know, hey, I'm John Benson. I've got a degree in this and I was on the cover of this magazine and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It, it gets really um, obviously gets pretentious and it, and it gets and it's boring to the to, to the reader. But but if you can say the same exact thing by saying, you know, I wasn't always a guy that was on the cover of Iron Man magazine like I am here. Mm -hmm. I used to be this fat piece of shit over here. <laughs> so, and so that's a, it's, it's this this juxtaposition over here, which is true. I used to be, I wouldn't say piece of shit, but I definitely was. This, I was this very very obese. Um, I was I I would, I would never call myself a true. I was just being uh, humorous there. But yeah. if I was like say I was a criminal or something, or I was doing something awful. Then I could say I was a piece of shit, but um, but I could say, look, I was this really obese guy that ended up having a heart attack in his you know late thirties of all things. So oh. I, so so you can that puts a story together in a. Yeah. They forget the Iron Man magazine cover or whatever, or, and and I didn't even make the cover. I made the inside cover, but they 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 forget that in a split second, and then they go right. over to the story, right? So so that but but it's still in their mind. So. You know, if I said if I graduated from Harvard, which I didn't, I would say, listen, you know, hey, I'm John Benson. And I never in a million years thought I would go to Harvard and end up on the cover of a magazine. Far from it. I did this. So so I'm telling a story and I start that story with the hero's journey. I'm starting with this unlikely hero that, that, that I just jump ahead to the worst times of his life. I don't start with the, the true start of it. But nonetheless, so 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 knowing these really basic storytelling parts, storytelling formulas are kind mm -hmm. of important. And then really realizing that that. It's not about your journey over your own demons that people are interested in. It's mm -hmm. your journey over their own demons. <laughs> so yeah. this is super important. That little distinction there, one word distinction makes all the difference in the world when you're writing. It's right. like if I'm writing something, I'm going, does this matter to them? Does this matter? Oh. You know, how does this matter to them? So for example, I'm not going to be talking about like, um, for example, I wouldn't say like, like, you know, I, I, I took a departure, went to music school and got a degree in jazz performance. No one gives a shit. I mean, I, no one cares. I mean, it, I would say that on my about page of myself, because people are saying, I want to know more about this person. And that's when you want that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm married, you have kids, you know, that kind of stuff. But telling a story doesn't have any impact unless 
it was like when I went to music school, I discovered I had an addiction to Roman noodles and <laughs> whatever. Uh, so then it makes sense. Then, then yeah. you can tell it in the story and it makes sense. So, so just knowing how to tell a, a story and make it like, and, and I don't, and then you could say to make it really effective for you, the person say, I went to music school. I found out that I had this addiction, one that you can probably relate to, mm. to these cheap pasta noodles. Now that's not true. I'm making this up completely, but, um, and, I would eat these noodles like crazy. And if you're anything like me, you can't stop. Now the story is like, I'm talking like to you, right? I'm not just telling a boring story about me. So, uh, it, so that's very important to be able to do in, in, in selling something. I think that's, and then you kind of touched on it earlier where if you're, if you're having an issue with being called salesy or that triggers you, or you're not putting yourself out there in whatever way you need to, to, you know, get your business going, whatever, then there's an issue. And I think a big issue that shows up is like sort of lack of belief in the product, or you don't care about the customer enough to make that transformation, et cetera. Right. I think when you take that approach to storytelling and you look at it, like from the, just even through the main filter of does this matter to them, you start to have a much more empathetic and much more clear view of at least the baseline, the baseline interests yeah. of, who you're talking to mm -hmm. and making it less about, it's kind of like if I were to give you, like if I were to give you a hundred page document on the volcanoes, it was like, John, this is super cool. You should check this out. You'd be like, great. The volcano. Thanks, it's always great to hear from you. Um, but, or, but if I gave you a hundred page document on, Hey, I had a friend who took, you know, the sun placement of when you were born and plus, you know, what I know about your personality mm. and incorporated these nutrition aspects. And this is all about you. Mm. And it's all about how you're, you'd be like, oh, cool. Right. Yeah. Much more so. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're interested yeah. in ourselves. And that's, it's yeah. hard to get out of the way of that. Yeah. But I think it, the, the key to telling a compelling story to make it, to make it to where the customer or prospect becomes mm. interested in you is right. to continually relate back your woes and your problems to their own. Like I saying, uh, so you, they don't want to hear about your problem. They want to hear about their problems through you. So right. it, because they want to see how you solved it. Right. And so if you're telling that story with them in mind, simple, simple language tie downs, like, you know, or, or callbacks, like uh, when I say, if I'm telling a story, I say, can you relate to that? Does anything like that ever happen to you? Well, well just something that simple can mm. involve, somebody else. I mean, have you ever, have you ever had a conversation with a friend and you knew that the friend was listening to you because they were waiting for you to stop talking so they could start talking about how that was directly related to them. And, and it, it often, it's like, they were just waiting to talk so that they could tell you about like their own stuff. I mean, like I, I, I give you an example th th this is, this is how annoying it is to tell a story the wrong way. It'd be like, <laughs> if I said to you, Say, Ella, you know, I'm going through this really difficult time right now. My cat just, this isn't true. My cat just passed away. And you're like, oh, God, I know my dog passed away last week and it was terrible. And then my mom's cat, Canary, passed away. And, and yeah, don't you, I mean, like, gosh, you, I remember when I was a kid and my puppy, I mean, you know, it's like at some point I just want to reach out and, 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 and like strangle you or leave the room. You know, <laughs> you know, so leave the room would be the option. But, uh, but it, it, it's, it's really, that's a gritty, ah, it's a, it's an awful feeling. And we all know people like that. We all know people that they don't, they either don't know they're doing it or they just can't help doing it. Um, they just turn the whole story back onto themselves. So, so take that mentality and how much you hate it because we all do and realize that your customer is going to hate it if you are sounding like that to them. So they want you to turn it back to them because it's a one way conversation. You're the only person talking there. You know, you're, you're in, and you are, and by the way, you are talking. So you've got a, even if you're not in a video sales letter, which I'm known for it, you, you could be, you're speaking, you've you got words on a page. It's your voice coming out them. And they're hearing their, their voice in, in this very important distinction. They're hearing their voice when they read your letter, unless they kind of know your voice. And oftentimes they'll hear your voice kind of weird, but nonetheless, it's a one way communication you are communicating to one person. So if you don't involve that person, it is a literal one-way communication. And that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like someone saying, 
like, oh, my puppy just died. Oh, that's that sucks. Well, I just got I just got laid off of my job. So I know, you know, it's like what? it feels like that. It feels like that much of a just jarring, dysfunctional conversation. And you want to avoid it like the freaking plague. Oh, those are. Yeah, those are the words. I think I, I heard this recently. This isn't like my own original thought. Someone told me this. I forgot who. But I think even like we fall in love with the person or people that we feel understand us the most. Sure. Yeah. Right. That's like yeah. that's when we have that real connection. But oh, yeah. side note, you know, you know what I do when I have those people who like what? just, you know, you have to be around them sometimes or just not enjoyable. I just pretend I'm having them on a talk show. So I just ask. <laughs> start interviewing them. <laughs> Actually, I pretend we're on a talk show. So I just ask yeah. them questions. I'm like, well, tell me more about that. And how did that affect you? And like, I just Could pretend you, it's, yeah. it's a talk show. You, you know, you're not going to leave. At the you're end, not, yes. yeah, you're not, you're, you're not gonna, like, thanks I, much I, for coming. It, 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 yeah, it's like <laughs> if you're stuck there, I guess that's one way to do it, you know. I, right, just, yeah, that's for sure. But yeah, it, that's that's no fun at all. And, and and to be understood, going back to what you said, is super important. I mean, uh, so your, your goal as a copywriter is to make your your prospect feel understood seen and validated those are the three emotional states that i go for um so understood and seen are two different psychological um concepts they, they sound very similar but to understand you so you could say like i i know what it feels like to get up and feel like you're struggling to get out of bed and you know that you feel horrible when you get in your clothes that's being that's that's getting someone to understand to see them is to see them as they are and how they can be Mm -hmm. And you're, you're wording things as they are and as they, they can be. Um, that's slightly different uh, psychological stuff. And validation is to say it's okay where you're at. It makes sense because I was there too. So mm -hmm. those three concepts, I ironically are, or, may, or maybe not ironically, are, are the exact same concepts that work for great relationships. You know, huh. Seen, understood, validated. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. I think, I think the scene one, it's what that's something that, that that's definitely something I noticed in great relationships. And I remember you mentioning that at one point, I think we were just in passing conversation mm -hmm. where we we're just talking about being seen in general. And I'd never just as people, and I never really, I mean, well, I hadn't had like much, many deep talks about that stuff beforehand, but I'd never really thought about that where really a lot of the time, the people that we really value, whether they're intimate partners, whether they're great friends or family or whoever, mm -hmm. you feel really seen by them. And it's always the people that see, they, they treat you, you know, uh, almost as if they see your potential. And, yeah. 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 And, and, but it's not, it, it, they see you where, where you are and where you can be, but mm. in a non-judgmental way, that's, that's a very interesting space to be able to hold in a personal relationship is to see somebody for their, their potential without being a dick about it. Right. Without like, you know, Oh gosh, I see so much potential in that person. If only they would do this, that, or the other to please me. It's like, you know, that that's real dickish behavior, but, but to see someone is like where to love them, where they are and to mm. love them where they can be. And to have that love be this, this, this there's no difference in the, the quality or, of or you know quantity of it. It's just it's just an all encompassing thing. But so so those are some tricky aspects to navigate. But when you're selling something, it's a lot different. As if you're selling something as a pro, I can totally see you where you are. I can totally tell you where I can take you and walk you in a future paced way to that future. Um, and, and that's completely fine. That that's that's where selling in relationships kind of of our ways. But uh, right. yeah, you, you kind of you probably don't want to do that to your wife or husband or. You know, significant other you don't want to <laughs> like, i don't think i yeah i don't think like wives and husbands and boyfriends and girlfriends should be each other's coaches like yeah, i don't think that not. works great I, it probably i think being being each other's champion champions like, i i got your back i totally i totally you can do this you know mm -hmm. I, I i keep thinking of the the movie rocky the original rocky movie back from the 70s and uh uh the original movie won i think two academy awards or something like that but uh it's back when Academy Awards meant something because <laughs> they don't mean anything now. But, but uh, yeah, and there were, but Rocky was essentially a love story, and, and it was like people Aww. just they caught they they missed the love. I I think I think people at the time, so many of them missed the love aspect of it. But it jumped out mm -hmm. to me like crazy. But I mean, it's such an obvious love story story that happens to center around a guy that's you know becoming a boxer, 
or has a chance to become a, a champion boxer. But, uh, it, but there's so many little scenes in that movie that show you that the, the, the archetype, the archetype of, of somebody who sees the potential and believes in the other person without mm -hmm. saying that if you get to this point, then I will love you or then I will accept you, mm. which is what we've all been through. If you've ever been through a dysfunctional relationship, most of us have, uh, you've been through that. Like, if only you were this, I could love you. Or if only you were this, I could respect you. And, and granted, like if, if you're dating a drug dealer and you, <laughs> for whatever <laughs> reason, and you say, if only you would stop dealing drugs, you'd be an awesome guy. Or, well, that may be true, but you yeah. are a strange girl for dating the guy who's the drug dealer, right? There, there's a there's a tango going on there that needs to be looked at very carefully by a psychiatrist or something. But, but, but you know, the, 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 there are people that that are not in those extremes that are in that have dealt with the judgment and how terrible it feels. So remember yes. how judgment feels, and that judgment is is the opposite of being empathetic of 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 validating somebody's pain of validating somebody's um choices in life without giving them a free pass mm. so the, the phrase it's not your fault but now it's your responsibility is one i used in my first video sales letter that became somewhat famous people use that all the time now it's you know, use that fault. all you originated that mm -hmm. yeah. people use that all the time yeah yeah that's <laughs> one oh, of my few I had no, okay, keep to, I had no idea. To the zeitgeist to copy maybe but, but yeah that was in the very first vsl but 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 and i and i, I said it because I, I i at the time i was looking at um tom the only sales letter i studied was tom's the one he wrote for me because i did, didn't want to study copywriting and i was writing out this short letter and i knew there was this part that that, that he had talked about it's like well you've got to tell somebody it's not their fault mm. right and yeah, there, I mean, it's there's a there's a beautiful scene in in the movie Goodwill Hunting where, you know, it's uh, Robin Williams, yeah. it's not your fault, it's not your fault. All oh, right, that that's super important, but it's even more important for you as a creator of a product to understand that there are many reasons why somebody might be in the position that that, that they're in, that it's not their fault. That I'll, I'll, let's look at dieting just for a second for for mm -hmm. like people that are overweight or I was obese, right? It's my fault for picking up pizza and hamburgers and ice cream cones and whatever and stuffing them in my mouth like crazy <laughs> so no no one is going to blame okay so that's my fault and mm -hmm. but if you trace trace back what was going on in the patterns was it my fault if i and i didn't but let's say that i did let's say i grew up in a family where my dad fed me ice cream every night before i went to bed mm -hmm. and uh, he didn't thankfully but let's say he did well how much of my fault well, then it's more of a wiring issue but we all have these wiring issues. We all have things, even in the best of families, the best of, of childhoods growing up, where we get indoctrinated into ideas that simply don't serve us. And so to be able to find those ideas and be able to say, here's why it's not all your fault. So don't beat yourself up over this you've, you, uh, So for dieting. Look, for, I, for, I talk to women a lot in, in the field. So I say, look, you grew up looking at women's magazines that are, you know, he heavily photoshopped telling you this diet. And then the next week it would be the exact opposite diet. And the week after that, it'd be right back to the first diet. And, you know, you'd see this, this celebrity lose 80 pounds and this one, you know, gain it right back. So you're constantly bombarded with absolutely confusing imagery. Okay. Confusing on what your potential should be, how you should look, you know, what you should eat. Who could blame you for saying, fuck it, where's the pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. At some point, I, I mean, I, so, and I literally 1000% feel that way. At the same time, now that you know there's a better way through this, and now that you know you, you don't have to starve yourself or this or that or the other, it's now your responsibility. You now have been given the full responsibility to take the actions re required to go to where you want to go. And that is a massive distinction, a, a big difference. And it is it, ultimately our own responsibilities, no matter how we slice the pie. Like it doesn't matter if you were born into this horrible situation, it's still your responsibility. You just have, you just have a harder hoe than a harder road to hoe than other people do. And um, yeah, so, so, but to be able to communicate that in sales is, is very, very powerful to say, I, you know, let me help you because you know, it's not your fault, but here's the tool that can get you out of it. And now, it's your responsibility to take action. And then you leverage that. If you want to go into sell stuff, we could, but you know how you leverage that is, 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 is the pitch. Yeah, no, that's really like, honestly, I, I guarantee that any woman listening to this right now, totally related to that statement. Hey, you've been bombarded with different ideals <laughs> of beauty, depending on what was in that year. 
um, you know, be really skinny. No, like have a fat ass. Like it totally makes sense that like this is yeah, right. <laughs> You're kind of screwed up around what you're right. supposed to look like and what's even yeah. socially acceptable. So what are, yeah. I mean, cause I just like have to ask you this, what are some things that you use to really understand your market? Because you're, you're, you can just snap, you're a pro, right? You can snap into it like that. Mm. But what are some things maybe you did in the beginning when you were first putting stuff out that you use to really understand your market and tap into where they were emotionally? Um, I didn't do a good job of it when I first started oh, off. I, right. I, I didn't. I, I, I assume like my clients assume, but I wasn't a copywriter at the time that I assume like my, my clients assume that I was the avatar. So, um, that, that, that is really explicitly shown in the fact that I put my own picture on the cover of my first book. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with having your picture on the, on the cover of a book. That's actually mm -hmm. somewhat normal. My point was that the original photo was me in a tank top on the cover of my book. And Tom was saying, John, you don't want to you, you don't want to do that. I go, why? He goes, well, first of all, you don't look 40, what most people think are 40. And second of all, you, you look muscular like a bodybuilder. No, people don't want to look like you. I'm like, I'm, I, at the time, I weighed 185 pounds. I'm like, 180, I'm, I'm 185 pounds. I don't look. What are you talking about? In my mind, I was just this kind of fit guy you know mm -hmm. and it did not go over well at all. <laughs> I, ended up, I ended up photoshopping a shirt on the cover so that the shirt on the cover is now is not a shirt it's just a photoshopped shirt that i photoshopped this is how yeah i didn't have a big budget back then but um but yeah that that so that's how like clueless i was like oh yeah i didn't get it at all i did you know and so i and granted there there are people that can do that and they get bio with it. There's all this different, but I, but for, for whatever reason I couldn't. So, um, but so I don't think I learned to, to really, to resonate with my avatar and I say avatar, let me just, that sounds really technical. And I'm, that is a, the technical term for it, but a reader, a prospect, a, 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 a person that's in the pain that I want to help get them out of. Okay. So that's really what that means. Uh, until I started reading their own words, until I started going to yeah. forum pages or Facebook pages or um, comments on books that they've read and hearing how they would express their pain and what they were going through. And I would realize that they're not, no one's sitting there going, man, I really wish I had six pack abs and, you know, broad shoulders. I'm, that, that's not what most guys were, were saying that I was targeting. Most of them were saying, my wife has lost all attraction for me and I hate oh. myself and I, I, I haven't seen my dick in six, 16 years. <laughs> and I mean, I, so True. I was coming at yeah. it from a position. I'm not, I'm not making this up. This is literally no, what like, like, female yeah. avatars were saying. And the female avatars made that sound like a compliment. So the way that they would talk about themselves was Oof. disturbing to say the least. And, and, and I realized that, well, there's, you know, to, to be empathetic and to say, to, to, uh, again, um, uh, very validation is extremely important. And if you say, look, if you've ever felt these thoughts, if you ever had these thoughts or felt these feelings, I want to help you free yourself from them because we both know they're destructive, but I understand because I've mm. had very similar thoughts too. And I, and I have, I had similar thoughts. So I had to go back to the time where I was having thoughts of myself. And that's very easy to do when you're, you know, remember being care flighted out of a, house because their hospital was too far away and put into a freaking care flight helicopter at 4 30 in the morning and you're having crushing chest pain and you know kind of heart attack that's not one of those silent heart attacks but the kind where they go you're not going to make it and and, and and have you ever been in a care flight helicopter or not hope not but if you have mm -hmm. you know that anyone that's listening to this knows that, that you were rolled into a on a gurney and you're at least the way what one i was under uh my nose was literally touching the top part of a Ooh. cold metal it felt like i was in a metal coffin Ooh. and so i was like and, and i was like <laughs> i was in too much pain to be and i'm not claustrophobic so i wasn't claustrophobic but i just remember thinking to myself this is what death is going to feel like and um and so yeah when you start getting into those conversations it changes a lot from six-pack abs and broad shoulders doesn't it so yeah you have yeah. So you have to be able to go to that place and also say, but you can also get this, that, and the other and all the good positive things, but you have to be able to re relate to somebody's pain. You have to be able to do that uh, in my, in my opinion. And there are people like my friend Clark, who I talked to today, Clark Barker. Um, he's in the fitness world. Uh, one of the most photographed fitness models in the world. He's my age. 
Um, and yeah, you know, I'm better looking than he is, of course, but you know, other than that, we're pretty much, you know, the same, but, <laughs> but, uh, just kidding, uh, Clark, if you're listening to this, uh, but, but he's seeing some real success, you know, after putting busting his ass in, in his, in his new fitness product. And mm -hmm. he's one of those kind of assault of the earth Marines. He's a literal Marine and, and just works his butt off and just super good guy. And, and, and he's finally fi figured out a way to channel all this energy that he's got, all this freaking incredible power that he's got into helping men over 50 and the people he's helping. I mean, he just nailed his avatar. He nailed the person that had the most pain and he nice. said, here's how I can help you. So that's how you have to start. Cause he's not going to be able to say I used to be <laughs> cause he was born with incredible genetics. And I think I've seen him. He's yeah. A beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's yeah. It, so he's born with incredible genes, but he's got other stories to tell to talk about right. like the, the same degree of pain. And and so he figured out a way to do that without saying, "Hey, it, it was me." He figured out a way to do it by telling their stories. So mm. you can't tell your own story. You have to know how to tell their stories, and yeah, let them. T that's a lot easier to do. To be honest with you, roll camera <laughs> and let them talk. Let them talk and ask them really good questions and then they'll tell the story. So, so yeah, but you're going to have to be able to do that because the person watching your or VSL or reading your sales page is going to want to know, um, why should I listen to you? I don't give yeah. a shit how many consonants you have behind your name. I don't care that you have abs. <laughs> that's only mildly impressive that you have abs or whatever they're looking for, right? Mm. That, that you've written a billion dollars of copy. That's, that's mildly impressive. Why should I, why should I believe that I can do a fraction of what you can do? Yeah. Why would they believe in themselves mm -hmm. in any way if they're on a page talking about something that's painful, mm. whether it's like money or dating or being a, coming a better marketer, they don't believe they, Yeah. So, um, they may be in a great position. My ideal client is someone like my friend Brent, who's a, um, he's Canadian. Uh, he's was three time Canadian Olympic swimming team. So mm. Brent Hayden. And uh, just amazing uh, bronze medalist. I mean, this is a badass. He beat Michael Phelps in the 100. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, we're talking like a, a athletic beast, right? And just the sweetest guy. He and his wife are just so cool. And, and and so he approached when he bought my product. He said, oh, man, I want to, I want to, I got to get good at this. I suck at this right now. But in his mind, he's like, yeah, but I'm an Olympian. So he, could, uh -huh. he was like, but he's like, oh, frustrated. I can't get this. Out. I can't get this right. But he knew for a fact, he's like, I've felt this pain before and I got all the way through it to the freaking Olympics. But so few people have gotten such huge success in their lives or they don't know how to channel their success. We athletes, we do. We, we can say, hey, I'm sucking at this, but I'm going to apply athletics, uh, you mm -hmm. know, principles of resistance or whatever to this and where I'm going to overcome it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so many people don't have that. They, they, they are in a state of absolute pain. They don't feel the parts of their life where they've been successful. So you need to tell them they, that's the most important thing to convey. Here's mm -hmm. why this is different and here's why you can do it, you know. I mean, basically, I, I, you want to make it to where they cannot, they feel like, it's, 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 stu it's too stupid proof to fail. And I'm not saying that you call your customer stupid at all. I'm saying that, that you kind of like the offer it's you, too you, stupid you, proof to fail. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. It, it basically, I mean, it, it made it failure proof is it, it, how you want to, as, as much as you can truthfully say that convey it because people don't believe in themselves. And if you say, I look, I get why you don't believe in yourself. I totally understand it. And I want to help you get to a point where you do. And that's what this is about. So um, that's a long winded way of saying to validate somebody is, is very, very important. <laughs> so I don't know how we got there from relation. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I remember how we got there. <laughs> yeah. No, but and it's and we all deal with this, right? Like I've had periods in my life where I've been really confident. But yeah. I mean, I've called you a couple of weeks ago and was having massive anxiety around a relationship. Mm. And I was just like, I don't know why I'm so like, I just want validation from this person. And yeah. you were like, well, maybe you should like, think about that. Like, why do you? And I'm yeah. like, oh yeah. Like, why do I? Like, yeah. why am I? Like, yeah. we have these things where like, we just get, we just feel like we're not enough, you know? Yeah. And this is, uh, you, you bring up an excellent point. Validation from the wrong person Oof. is psychologically traumatizing. It, it may feel good for a moment. It, it's like a dopamine hit. It's, it's no different than doing a drug. No hit. different than doing a drug. But yeah. validation from someone that you respect or that you admire, uh, the, the, there's a chasm there. So if someone's reading your sales page or watching your VSL, they might not know you. 
maybe they've heard of you. Maybe they've never heard of you, but a part of them admires you. Otherwise they would not listen. They wouldn't watch it mm-hmm. you know, more than likely, unless they're wanting to watch a train wreck, which is, you know, that, that does happen obviously, mm-hmm. but rarely in this case. So, so most of the time, if they're listening to your message and they got past the message, there's mm-hmm. something that you're saying that is inspiring them enough to go. I admire this person. So if you, admi- I admire them even this much, if you admire somebody this much and they can validate you, not yeah. only validate you as a person, only you can do that, but validate, validate your pain, validate the reason why you're suffering. Yeah. It's not all your fault. There's a reason why you're here. And there's a reason why we can get through this together. Let me, I figured out how to do this. My sole mission in life was to figure this out at one time. And now I figured it out. So let me share this with you and help you get out of this. You know, maybe I can't get you out of all the other pain in your life, but I get you out of this. <laughs> so that's an extremely validating thing that you want to hear people say is that I can help and that it's okay that you're here. So it's, it's the stuff where, and, and I think there's so much invalidation in the world going on where you look at it, you know, I'm guilty of this as much as the next person where you look at somebody and go, because they believe X, they're invalid or not invalid oh. as a person necessarily, but you know. Like, our current yeah. climate. Yeah. 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 Our current climate is, is, is probably the worst I've ever seen in all my years on the planet uh, of like, you know, people saying if, if you're, if you don't, uh, if you don't believe in the same medical advice as I believe in, you're an invalid yeah. human being or right? uh, on both sides of the, the, the fence that that goes, but one side of the fence is a lot worse than the other. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but so, so there's that level of just disdain and, and awfulness in our culture, but mm-hmm. that comes from, a place that is rooted in the psyche of the collective, the, the, the zeitgeist. So to tap into that, knowing that that that's in the zeitgeist, that's in the collective psyche. That's, that's, that's a part of the, the whole picture. You tap into that and you can, you can talk and you should speak as to someone that says, look, there's a brighter, there's something better on the other side of this. And you can do this without sounding, you know, I, I'm not a very, Pollyanna kind of person, you know, I'm not like one of these, like, oh, it's all going to be okay, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'm no, you're not. No, I would say like you're that. very realistic. About yeah, I like prefer to think so. The obstacles <laughs> that could be ahead. Yeah. 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 So here's the, the real, the realistic truth is, you know, this is the truth. You, you can absolutely do this. And, and then you should figure out why your prospect is where they are mm. and speak to that. Speak to that as truthful as you can. If you've been there, it's even better. So. No, totally. Okay. Well, just, I want to be conscious of time as well. Yep. So let's, so final question, yep. uh, or maybe tell us about the one connection, the one person, whatever it might be that really changed the trajectory of your business or your life. Um, well, business and life are two different things. So mm-hmm. you know, which one do you want? <laughs> let's go with business. Let's go with business. Okay. B- business. Okay. Uh, yeah. business th- that's Tom Venuta for sure. Yeah. Mm. That's an easy one for me to, for, because Tom, um, and, and Tom and I have been distant friends now for, I guess, a long time, uh, but not, uh, not close friends, uh, but, but Tom will always be a close friend in my heart because mm-hmm. not, not that, it, that we never had like a fight or a differences or anything. It's just that he's a very private, extremely reclusive person. And, uh, you know, I had to learn to respect that, but if it wasn't for Tom, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. So, um, and, uh, I think too many people don't don't say, Hey, you know, if it wasn't for so-and-so, I wouldn't be here. Um, there's a few people that have said that about me and it's like, and I just got told that today as a matter of fact, which is kind of crazy, but, uh, it's really nice when people say that, not that you take credit for their success, but that, that, cause they had to work at it. But if it wasn't Mm -hmm. for Tom, there's no way I I never would have known what a sales letter was. I would have never made the first sale of Fedora 40. So yeah, yeah, I definitely owe Tom a a huge debt of gratitude. So, so for sure that, that one's easy. You know, it's really funny is legit. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. And that's like dating it way back. Cause when I started this, when, when I started this, what was supposed to be a product line and turned into a company, this one degree, Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about, well, who is my one person? And I'm like, well, you know, Joe Polish had a really big effect on me. And then I yeah. met Joe Polish from Anthony trucks. And, yeah. but and now that I'm thinking back to it, I wouldn't even know the online world if it wasn't for you. And that oh. was what kicked it off. So that's, that's really cool. Well, thank you for saying that. It means a lot. And uh, by the yeah. way, second would be Joe. Uh, oh, my, there you go. Yeah, my, my second would be Joe and, and Joe and I are good friends. And um, mm. yeah, Joe's a, um, yeah, he's, he's an amazing human being in, in more ways than I can count. So definitely cool. I don't think I've met many people kinder 
than yeah. Joe. Like he, he's just, he's just incredibly kind. And it seems like anyone who he has a good feeling about, he's willing to give a leg up. And yeah, yeah. and that's really what he did for me. He really just kind of gave me a leg up and it totally changed my business, my network, everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Joe's one of those really rare, authentic, you know, people that, just, yeah, he's, he's just one in a billion. So um, mm. he really is. Yeah. He really is. Yeah. And we, we, uh, we share a lot of common friends and I realized that so many of my friends, I, I met, did I mean, I can't remember who I met first. I think I met Joe before I met. Yeah, I did. I met Joe before I met Sean Stevenson. Um, my late little brother, but, um, he, Sean, uh, so many people like Sean, um, I could just rattle off name after name that, 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 that moved my life into such a better place mm. who will forever be, you know, uh, etched in my brain. Um, just almost every single one of them. No Joe. Yeah. It's not just cause he's a great source of context cause he is, but it just so happens to be that they just gravitate around, around. So it says a whole lot about, about Joe and, uh, yeah. So yeah, for sure. Those two guys. Uh, but, but if I had to say who that one person, it would have to be Tom by default because Tom, <laughs> Tom wrote the first letter and was, I'm here because of the, the, the sales that he taught me into, he taught me into this whole thing. <laughs> he said, Let, you should try this internet marketing thing. So yeah, naturally he, he gets the, he gets the, gets the credit for that. Yeah. Totally. And how did you, so I remember you said you met Tom back in 04, but how did that yeah. introduction actually happen? Yeah, in 03 or 04, yeah, uh, it, it happened because he read an article, or I, I, can't, I can't remember if it was me reading his article on Vince Sharonda, uh, an old trainer in the, from the 60s, or me, or him reading mine or mine reading me reading his. It's one of the two. Yeah. He, he, he and I both had written an article on Vince Sharonda, and at the time, yeah. no one knew who Vince Sharonda was. And, and I was talking about his eight sets of eight, and he was talking about it. And so one of us reached out to the other guy going, hey, I just read your article. It's really cool. I found it on, I found it on this weird thing called Google. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's, it's, think about it. it's 2004. I mean, Google, you know, think about yeah, it. Yeah, like 2000. I mean, I yeah. was, I wasn't even on Facebook until, and I mean, I wasn't any sort of a huge techie growing up, but I wasn't even on yeah. Facebook till like 2006. When did they Facebook even start? Was it? It was before then when they were like only in, like they were in with the universities, right? So it was all yeah. college kids. And yeah. I remember not, it didn't get to like my neck of the woods, like around my circle. It was like, oh, six. I don't even remember when it started. I, 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 I just remember um, in the nineties, I remember wanting to get on the World Wide web, mm -hmm. being very emphatic about like, oh no, we have to do this in my company, my design firm. And yeah. they were like, why i said this is going to be the future and i remember you know we were all connected through a through an internal like a, a what they used to call it uh um it, it some i forget what they call land servers i believe but it, but anyway we were all connected and had computers and you know doing doing this stuff and and uh we built a you know a design firm and and i was doing you know business cards and brochures and you know things of that nature uh and also some higher end stuff like logo design which i got known for but um this is no bullshit. One of the most common things people would say is I design their card, you know, I put their, you know, I design their logo and I do their stationery and stuff. Yeah. And they would go and like, okay, this is great. Uh, you can take the email address off of the website. No one's ever going to go there. <laughs> oh. so it's like, I don't think that's a good idea. And then I was, I saw there was a European design journal I was reading and I saw that they took off the www and they had like name.com. And okay. I remember the first time I put it on a client's um, collateral, the material, and uh, they were like, you can't do that. You have to put HTTP something or other. I go, no, you don't. <laughs> you, you really don't. It's like, but at the time you had to type in HTTP. Oh, colon. you had to type. I remember yeah. we got yeah. the internet like in yeah. my house in like 95. And I remember it was a dial up. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I remember going to archiecomics.com and that's all I would do on the internet. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I just go to archiecomics.com and read comics. Wow. Yeah. But you had to type in every. And it was like. Arr, arr. Every, <laughs> everything. Yeah. So yeah. When I, whenever we put like, you know, like a uh, Acme, Acme.com, mm. my, my clients were like, well, and, and so they literally had people saying, I can't get to your website because they, they weren't typing in all the things, but it looked cooler to have Acme.com, Acme, .com, Acme <laughs> not Acme, uh, 
versus http so so yeah it, it's like, so it goes back that far but mm -hmm. um that's the uh, design stuff that the uh, the the internet marketing stuff goes back to 2004 and and so yeah so we met sometime around then and sometimes 2003 and then uh, yeah and then confederate 40 came out in 2004 so very cool yeah. very cool i love it all right let's finish off with some rapid fire questions and then you're yeah. out of here so I 100% right. stole these from Tim Ferriss in case okay. they sound familiar. Well, let me put so, my lips together. <laughs> so, I want you to look pretty this for this like part. A, this lip now. balm is like, God, man, my lips are like like freaking getting dry as hell. Okay, go ahead. Oh, dude, in the winter? I know, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, what is the best thing that you bought lately that is under $100? Oh, under $100. Um, God, best thing I bought under $100. Um. <laughs> Uh, like I um what is oh, okay, I, I, okay. Uh, Jack Factory peanut butter uh chocolate peanut butter ISO whey protein. Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah, it, it completely changed my my nutrition life. It did. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay, I finally found an ISO a, a way that I can drink, and it's it's an ISO way, so it's easier to digest. But I can mix it in a lot of the foods I eat and. And so, yeah, I was having a hard time getting a, um, at first I was, I was getting plenty of protein when I was carnivore. And then when I got off carnivore and went on to more of a bodybuilding diet, uh, just for, to see what it would, my, my body just changed over, over the year. And, and I had yeah. to include more carbohydrate for the first time in my life. And, and when I did that, I, the fats had to lower, I had to adjust everything. So I had to ch cram this all into like a six hour window. And it's like the, and I, yeah, I read a, uh, guy I follow on you on youtube said yeah i swear by this stuff got it loved it there you go nice <laughs> your discipline like and, and i've seen it firsthand your discipline with your body and nutrition is just second to none like it's oh. insane like the it's thank you but the discipline comes by um it, it comes because i have a pattern of that that works for me five on two off where I diet like a Spartan for five days and take the weekends off. And, and I, I was doing that before I heard anyone doing it. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't eat totally like an asshole on the weekends, but I eat pretty off. <laughs> and oh. uh, so that allows you, you never feel like you're ever stuck. I mean, it's already Tuesday night. So I mean, how much longer do you have to go? Right. And so, yeah, that, that helps, but the coming up with things that help and, you know, it, it makes it a lot easier, but yeah. And, and to do that, like to make it to where, you know, a guy I'm, I'm 209, 210 pounds, and I eat like 1,800 calories during the week. So it's very low calories. And to do oh. that, I have to have plenty of protein and, yeah. Is that water or food. vodka? What, no, that, is, that, is, that is Jack Factory protein. I, that, oh, that there we go. There brand, we go. I like, the, I like the best of all the brands. It tastes by far and away the less, least chemical and least bad stuff in it, you know, or you know, all the grass-fed stuff. So all good. Yeah. There we go. I love it. Okay. Question number two. What is the book that you gift the most often to people? Um, gift the most often? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I'm trying to think when the last time I gave a book to somebody. That's a, um, I would tell you the one I would gift the most often if I had to gift something. Well, it, I definitely I would gift Shakespeare in general because I want to mm. turn as many people on. But but if I had to narrow that down to a book, I would say The War of Art, Stephen Pressfield. Mm, um, by Pressfield. Yeah, yeah, and, and and that's because so many people deal with that struggle in in this mm. book, in this in this world or. Um, if I'm being hoity toity and trying to, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I would say, uh, the, the brothers Karamazov. So, Dostoevsky, so, but I have not given that book to anyone, but one person. So I don't think that counts. Walden I've given to two people. So I guess Walden would win. Walden, I, I think, people. yeah, I think you got me onto Pressfield stuff and his, mm -hmm. his stuff's phenomenal, especially anyone creative, artistic, any entrepreneur should, yeah. it'll take you two hours to read. It's so good. Yeah, it's super short, and, uh, yeah. and 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 but it's really funny how many people when I tell it to them they end up buying the Art of War, and oh, that's right. also a yeah, great yeah, book for a different reason. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Last question. So, if you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, real or fictional, who would it be and why? God. I want to know if God. you exist. Yeah. Really okay. simple. Yeah. If no one shows up, I have the answer to the question. <laughs> 
Um, so, so, so let's take, if we take God out of it, we, we limit ourselves to mortal beings. Um, it doesn't have to be God's okay. Oh, well, we can have a runner. A God. But if I was going to say a mortal being that yeah. was dead, I would say Thomas Jefferson because he was as, as uh, Christopher Hitchens so eloquently wrote the author of America. Um, I wrote my started to write my master's thesis on Jefferson. Um, and, uh, living, um, I would say, uh, gosh, Elon Musk or Trent Reznor? Hmm. Probably Elon Musk. That'd be interesting. I, th I think Elon's the coolest person on the planet. I, I mean, I just, I just love his, his, his independence and the fact he's trying to get to Mars and the fact that he, you know, hmm. if you, if someone's going to be the richest man in the world, don't you kind of want it to be him and not a dickhead like <laughs> fill in the blank? Of like the pick your dickhead. dickhead. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I'm not saying Elon's <laughs> perfect, but Elon's Elon's damn funny. Anyone that would go on Rogan and go on the View at the same time, yeah, right. you know, gotta love it. Oh no, I love it. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here. This has been awesome. Where can people yeah. find you? Well, I'm easy to find. JohnBenson.com. No H, J O N B E N S O N dot com. So. And type that into YouTube. You guys check out John's YouTube channel. He's been killing it on YouTube. The channel's growing like a weed tons of resources if you have or if you yeah. sell things if you have anything to sell if you want to learn how to make more money go yeah. check that out and it's so easy to get to johnbenson.com forward slash youtube one of those pretty links i know i yeah. love it there i you love go. it okay easy to perfect remember. <laughs> yeah amazing well again thanks for being here this has been such uh, a fun conversation and yeah. hopefully we will chat again soon Hope so. Thanks, Ella. This broadcast is brought to you by Winject Studios. We are an all-in-one educational platform for podcasters that revolutionizes how hosts leverage content to increase engagement with listeners, downloads, and income. We come together to focus on community, collaboration, and collective impact. For more information on how you can interact directly with our hosts, access exclusive live content with offers you can't get anywhere else from our official partners, join our purpose-driven community by visiting www.winject.com. If you're ready to build a career doing what you love, then we're ready to see you there.